Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and it's been a minute. My January has been full of unfun things like doctor appointments, but I just had a doll arrive, and I thought it might be nice to share a bit about it and what plans are. So this was my last Grail doll, and after several years of looking and missing out on the doll secondhand several times, toward the end of summer, Soom re-released the doll in their new peony white resin color. This was always intended to be a body for my character in Vessi, who I already have as a soul doll Paratisi head, but I hadn't been happy with the body she had, so I was more than happy to sell it and replace it with this. I was lucky enough to find a split with an organizer who only wanted the head, so I leaped on it as soon as I could, and now, almost six months later, here she is, in Vessi's new body from a Soom Super Gem Nephilim. The peony white resin is beautiful, white with a very soft touch of pink. I got this body with the upgraded mobility thigh and also got the fantasy feet, which I'll share in a moment. They might be a bit of a spoiler for book things, but oh well I guess. <laughs> the doll also has the option of wings, for which there are ports on the back with shoulders. We'll take a closer look at those later on. I didn't get the fantasy hands because I'll be making my own, but she did come with high heel feet. Then there are the fantasy legs. These have the traditional very bad Soom fantasy part seam lines, but they don't bother me much, and they're honestly not as bad as the seam lines runes fantasy parts came with, so whatever. Then we have the feet. These are so delicate and beautiful in this color, and I can't wait to put the doll together. I want to blush these with a hint of iridescence, but I may need to do a little cleanup and adjustment on them because, like the Sum Monzo feet I got for Rune many years ago, the drilling through the fantasy parts is not the straightest, so it might be a little difficult to string them. A lot of people were interested in the updated Super Gym body, so while I've got her out, we'll look at the basic capabilities of the jointing. Soom has definitely made some interesting choices for this doll, and it's very clearly meant to be a display piece that isn't moved around a lot. I'll show you why as we go on. We'll start by looking at the knees. These are kind of tricky to use. They're a double joint, but the top part really doesn't want to come out of the upper socket. The top of the upper knee piece has ridges that push into the inside of the thigh piece to lock in place, but I had trouble getting them to lock well. The knees have an okay range of motion for letting her bend her legs though. This coupled with the mobility joint in the thigh means she can sit upright with her legs bent, which is nice, but her shin is so long that she can't pull them too close. I think it still looks pretty natural overall. The mobility thigh piece is kind of a one-trick pony, though. It doesn't offer any sort of side-to-side -side rotation whatsoever. It's pretty much just made to let her sit with her leg drawn up. Her hip joints also don't allow any rotation, because they have both a ridge at the top and an unusual disc-type piece in the upper leg that fits into the pelvis. From what I can tell, this is here for the stringing to be run from one foot to the other without going into the upper body, which will make it easier to swap between the human legs and the fantasy legs. It allows the leg to bend outward to the side, but that's about it. Not all Super Gym bodies will have the wing ports in the back, but you can see they're hexagonal to hold wing pegs steady, and the covers here have magnets in them, so they snap firmly into place. I won't have to worry about these coming out. The magnets are pretty strong and actually kind of tough to get apart. The range of motion in the torso is probably one of the doll's best features, with ridges sculpted into the back to hold different levels of slouch. I found these easy to use and plenty sturdy. The arm, like the leg, doesn't have as much rotation as I'd like because it also has the unusual disc thing going on, and I already have a whole video devoted to the weirdness of Soom elbows. Mm -hmm. 
The purpose of this design is so the arm can be pulled up and a ridge on the inside of the forearm can be inserted into the upper part of the elbow so the elbow locks bent. This is great for a doll that stays on display, but it severely impedes range of motion. Her arm can barely move when the lock is engaged, and if it's not engaged, she can't lift her forearm above elbow height. The lack of rotation means she can't even cross her arms. The ability to lock isn't impeded by removing the peg at the top of the elbow joint, but removing it gives the arms way more mobility, so I'll definitely be modifying my doll like I did for my friend. I do really like the magnetic hands, and I wish more companies did this. This will be really nice for dressing the doll, and for making my own custom hands in the future too. After all the odd joints, the feet are almost painfully normal. There are actually two pieces, with a sort of ball shape that goes over a resin hook that connects to the elastic, but that's not unique and is sort of refreshingly ordinary after a bunch of other odd choices they've made. The large wrist ball means the hands have a lot of motion, which almost but doesn't quite make up for the lack of mobility in the elbows. The torso has a very wide side to side movement, and I'm not sure how that'll be useful, but it's a thing, and I'll probably enjoy it at some point. Despite the unusual and sometimes limiting choices in the joints, I am overall happy with this doll purely because the knees on the fantasy legs are made specifically to fit into the existing knees and be double jointed, so I don't have to do any kind of modifications whatsoever. Since I haven't felt well enough to work on dolls at all this month, the idea of working on something without needing to make major changes is very refreshing. That said, I'm still not sure when I'll get to putting this doll together because I'll need to take off the old color match from the doll's head and repaint her to match the new body. I think the white resin suits this character a lot better though. Unfortunately, the head doesn't actually fit the neck. The old Super Gym body had a smaller neck than this, so I assumed this one would be the same, and that was a mistake on my part. I'll have to drill out the bottom of the doll's head to get it to sit on here nicely, but at least that shouldn't be a super difficult change to make. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.